Welcome to lesson four on ecology. Uh, in the previous lessons that you've studied, in the first lesson you looked at uh, factors that affect the growth and distribution of an organism, which includes as key words like abiotic and biotic factors. In the second lesson you've looked at adaptations, which is something that goes right back to uh, primary school and key stage two. Uh, where you started to learn about how animals and plants are adapted to live in particular areas. In the third lesson, you looked at levels of organisation, uh, which is the slide that's currently in front of you. We can see that within that levels of organisation, uh, there are feeding relationships, and this lesson starts off with a very simple exercise of constructing a food chain uh, that is already within this particular document, which is here. Uh, but there's also uh, a need to understand the word abundance and distribution of organisms. Abundance is the amount of and distribution is where it lives. So that fits then within a required practical, which is required practical number nine. And we're going to be looking in today's lessons um, at two ways of sampling, which includes a quadrat and includes a transect, which both have very different uh, ways of using them accurately, but also in terms of what they will measure. So our challenge for today is to determine the distribution and abundance. Remember that's where it lives and abundance is how many of them there are of a species in an ecosystem. We've got some mathematical terms that we need to be familiar with, including mean, mode and median data. Uh, and then Aspire, we're going to uh, analyze and interpret graphical data relating to predator prey cycles. We're going to learn how to describe those. diagram may look something like this. Uh, as you can see, uh, moving up the middle of the diagram, I have uh, a food chain starting with the plant, which is a producer. Uh, it's a producer because it uses photosynthesis to make its uh, own food. And then beyond that, I've drawn a line, but you don't need to do that. I want wider teaching and understanding here when I'm teaching this in a classroom. Uh, so let's be clear that these animals are all gaining energy from the process of respiration. These animals are all consumers uh, moving from this point. Now other words that we're expected to add, aphid is a herbivore because it's feeding from a plant. Then we've got animal eating carnivores and carnivores. Now it may be the case that the bird eats both plants and animals in which case we could label that. But uh, in this uh, example that we've given you, we're not clear about those. So down at the bottom of the page, uh, we've got our keywords. Let's just review those while we're here. Uh, we've got producers, we've got primary. So a primary uh, consumer in this case would be the aphid. Secondary consumer, the ladybird, and a tertiary or third level consumer uh, would be the bird. Uh, they're all consumers. We've got the community, which is everything that lives in a particular environment. Uh, quantitative sampling, which is uh, literally looking at the number of organisms within an area. And we've got some specific words for today that we're going to learn about. Quadrat sampling, line transect sampling, uh, and predators and prey, which are words that came from primary school that we should know about. So for example, a predator in the example above would be a ladybird and its prey would be an aphid.
So let's move. So far in this PowerPoint, then we've looked at uh, the third lessons levels of organization and done some revision on that. Going back to the first lesson, we can see from this slide that ecologists look at biotic living and abiotic non-living factors uh, and the way that they affect the distribution and abundance of organisms. To do that, the simplest way to do that is with a piece of equipment called a quadract, which is usually 0.5 metres, and you'll see one of those in the accompanying slides. Uh, that gives an area for that particular quadract, 0.25 metres squared. We're going to see that the sample size is very important to make the results as valid as possible. And we're going to learn about something called random sampling in the next few slides. So we have two methods that we need to know and we're going to see more and more detail on these as we run through that uh, information. So quadrats, first of all, uh, are used to uh, sample plants or slow moving organisms. And the second one, the line transects and measure the, uh, measure the distribution of species within a habitat. Uh, now I'm going to give you a minute or so to read the slides that are in front of you. So the next slide adds more detail to the two methods of sampling that we're talking about in this PowerPoint. We have quadrat sampling, and there's a link lasting three minutes and 38 seconds for you to watch. And there's a line transect uh, sampling. Hi, my name's Bronwyn. I work at the Cambridge University Botanic Garden, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about quadrats and how to use them really easily in your school grounds or your local playing field to study grassland ecology um, the kind of plants you might get just on your school lawn. So there's a variety of quadrats you can use or have at your disposal. One of the most kind of commonly seen ones is an open quadrat. So this is a rather large example. And this is just a really easy, quick way to define an area within which to look at plants. And you can compare two different areas that look different to you when you're just standing there looking and seeing which plants are in each. So that's your open if you don't have any open quadrats at your school, you can really easily make a homemade version. So this is just a coat hanger that you can pull open to make a rough square shape. So a quadrat doesn't have to be any particular shape or size, as long as it's uh, the same in each place that you're placing it, that's fine. So this would be, do the job just as well. You may have also seen quadrats a bit like these ones. So this is a gridded quadrat and it can be used in the same way, so comparing two different areas and looking at the plants within each of those areas. So this is obviously one that's been bought, but you could make your own version out of some fencing, so quite nice and flexible, and again, you can place it on the ground and just have a look at the plants in there. Okay, so here we have a gridded quadrat, and this one is 10 by 10 squares. So in total, our area is 100 squares, or 100%. If we think about the squares making up 100%, then each square is 1%. What you want to get your students to do is to look into each of the squares in turn, methodically, and think about whether the square is half or more full of a certain plant. So if I was to start down here and look at grass over the whole, whole of the quadrat, we could count up. So in this square, it's probably just about covering half or more, so you get 1%. There's nothing in this square, so we wouldn't count it. Third square, there's half or more, so that's another percent, two, and so on. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the first row. And you continue that all the way up in your 100 squares, counting whether the grass is present in half or more of each square. And this just allows your students to look a little bit uh, 
square more closely in each of the squares, making it the front. Again, comparing one area to the second area. So you don't need to worry at all if you don't know anything about plants or any of your plant species, it doesn't matter. As long as you can tell the plants apart and that they're different from each other. So if we were to take this area here, you can get your students to look at the leaf shape. Sometimes it's handy to turn the leaf over as well. So you'll see this one on the back has nice distinct ridges. So this plant here has slightly longer elongated leaves with ridges on the back. Right next to it, we've got something that may at first glance look similar, but it's actually got much rounder leaves. If we turn it over, no ridges. And it actually feels slightly different too, which you feel the hairs on the leaf. We now need to estimate the total population of daisies in the whole field. To do that, we use this equation. The total population size equals the total area divided by the area sampled, multiplied by the number of organisms of that species counted in the sample. In this case, the total area is 20 meters multiplied by 20 meters, which gives us 400 square meters. Each quadrat was 0.5 by 0.5 meters, and we threw the quadrat 10 times. This gives us an area sampled of 0.5 multiplied by 0.5 multiplied by 10, which is 2.5 square meters. And the number of daisies counted in the sample was 300. Putting these numbers into the equation gives us a total daisy population of 48,000 daisies. Okay, now I should point out that this is an estimate. It's possible that our 10 quadrat throws do not represent the whole area. For example, there might be regions within the area with a much higher or much lower number of daisies than the average. If we think that's the case, then we should increase the number of quadrat throws to cover a greater percentage of the area. Okay, now in this required practical, we also need to measure the effect of a factor on the distribution of a species. In this case, we're going to look at the effect of light intensity on the distribution of daisies. I'm showing you here another field of daisies, but this field also contains a large tree. In this case, we need to use a transect line to see how the number of daisies changes from the tree outwards. To do this, we place a tape measure at the tree. We then use a quadrat to count the number of daisies at the start of the transect. We also need to record the light intensity at this point, and to do this we can use a light meter or we can use an app. Now we move the quadrat one meter down the tape measure and repeat the measurements, and we continue doing this all the way down the tape measure. Now it's possible that we'll see a greater number of daisies as we move further from the tree. That's because under the tree there'll be a lower light intensity. Remember that plants need light in order to photosynthesize. However, you also need to bear in mind that a tree will absorb a lot of water and minerals from the soil. So it might be that light intensity is not the only abiotic factor that's affecting the number of daisies. Remember, you'll find plenty of questions on this required practical in my original workbook, and you can get that by clicking on the link above. So the information that you've seen on both of the uh, links on the previous slide can now be used on the Google sampling document that you have got. The picture itself is the link, so click on that to bring up the Google document. This can be typed into and the method and your learning shown, uh, so it can be printed at a future date. It uh, is very clear and straightforward and has embedded links in it for added information if you want to see how either of the methods works. Pause the video to allow you to do that at uh, this point. Uh, On the challenge to determine the distribution abundance of species in an ecosystem, we have reference to the mean, mode, and median data. The next few slides that we have are just testing the math skills, and you should work through those independently while the uh, slides are running. Feel free to pause if you need help, but the answers are on the page to see if you're correct. You should know 
uh, each of those keywords mean, mode, median and range by the time you have finished the next few slides. So this next slide will allow you to apply the math skills we've just practiced for mean, mode, median and range. There are three questions with a variety of information given in a number of ways. Pause the video as you need to. The answers will be on the next slide. So the answers are on the page, just check your answers against the information that you have in front of you. So as we saw at the start of the PowerPoint, the syllabus asks us to look at a required practical at this point. We have to measure the population size of a common species in a habitat. We have to use sampling techniques to investigate the effects of a factor on the distribution of this species. Um, that could mean using a quadrat or using a transect line. But we also have to look at graphical data and describe that data uh, in word form from a graph. So the last slide has a link to a very brief ecology quiz, which will just allow you to show some very short answer understanding from the lesson that you have been through. I hope you've now got a Google document that you have completed with method for transect line and uh, quadrat, but you also should have the ecology quiz that's in front of you now. Thanks for working through this document.